Hello everyone. My name is Andrew Adelson, and I play oboe and English horn in the New Jersey Symphony Orchestra, and I teach at the Mason Gross School of the Arts at Rutgers University. I started playing the oboe when I was nine years old. Back then, when I was in elementary school, I heard my older brothers playing music on the clarinet and cello. They played with my mother, who was a pianist and a piano teacher. Back then, I knew that I wanted to play music too, and that I loved the sound of woodwind instruments, in particular the oboe. So I chose the oboe, and I've been playing it ever since. I've been playing with the New Jersey Symphony for over 25 years. Today, I'd like to talk to you about how to stay motivated to play the oboe and to practice and to keep making music. And also, I'd like to talk to you about safe and productive ways to do that. So here we go. The oboe reed. Let's talk about the oboe reed. The oboe is a double reed instrument. That means that there are two pieces of cane in the reed that vibrate against each other. They are tied with thread on a hollow metal tube that has a cork exterior. For the purposes of this video, I will assume you already have a reed. All professional oboe players make reeds by hand for themselves. If you don't have access to a professional to sell you reeds, then you can find many options online. There are companies and oboists who sell them. Once you have a reed, you must soak it in water before playing it in order to make it flexible enough and vibrant enough to play. I soak my reeds for approximately three to seven minutes in warm water before playing. And then after playing the oboe, in order to protect your reed, you should store your reeds in a reed case so they don't get damaged. Reeds are unfortunately very fragile. Embouchure. What does that word mean? The embouchure is the way an instrumentalist applies their mouth to the reed or mouthpiece. I like to think of it as the form and position that the mouth, lips, and jaws, upper and lower, have in relation to the reed. What does an ideal embouchure look like? When we whistle, or even simply attempt to whistle, fortunately, our embouchure usually forms into a very good position for playing the oboe. Hallmarks of a good oboe embouchure are a fairly open mouth. The corners of the embouchure should be close together. Also, it is very important to not have any air puffing under your lips like this. Also, it's important to make certain that you do not puff out your cheeks when you play like that. Here is what a good embouchure looks like. How to put the reed 
in your mouth without damaging it. It is important to not damage the reed as we put it in our mouth. So there are a number of steps you can take to minimize this risk. I will list the steps and then I will demonstrate them. There are five steps. Step one, you stick out your tongue. Step two, you bring the cane part of the reed to your tongue slowly, like it is a spoonful of hot soup. Step number three, place the cane part of the reed on your tongue. Step four, bring your tongue with the reed on it back into your mouth. And finally, step five, form your embouchure around the reed. So here we go. Step one, stick out your tongue. This is the fun part. Step two, bring the cane part of the reed to your tongue slowly like it is a spoonful of hot soup. Step three, place the reed on your tongue. Step four, bring your tongue with the reed on it back into your mouth. And step five, form your embouchure around the reed. Practice this sequence of steps many times. It is truly target practice. You don't want to end up smashing the reed and cracking it into your teeth. Making a sound on the reed. Once the reed is in your mouth, you'll want to take a breath through your mouth, not your nose, but through your mouth, while leaving the reed on your lower or upper lip. Then you'll want to reform your embouchure and blow into the reed to make a sound. This is what it looks like. Articulation, also called tonguing. We call articulating on the oboe tonguing because we usually use our tongue to start a note. In order to have clear articulations, you should most of the time put the tip of the tip of your tongue directly into the opening of the reed. In other words, the tip of the tongue goes between the blades of the reed. You should do this very gently and retract the tongue quickly so it does not linger on the reed. You can practice this with the reed alone. If you tongue properly with a well-formed embouchure, the reed will not bounce when you touch your tongue to the reed. Practice so that when you tongue on the reed alone, it looks and sounds like this. It is important to know the proper names of the different parts of the oboe. This is the bell. This is the middle joint, or sometimes called the lower joint. And this is the upper joint. And last, again, this is the reed.
Assembling the oboe. It is important to know how to assemble the oboe. Any good instrument repair person will tell you that many, if not most, of the problems with oboes that need repairing are caused by people squeezing the keys too hard when assembling or taking apart the oboe. So, in order to avoid causing problems, we make certain that the cork tenon joints are well greased. You take cork grease and you put it on the cork tenon joint and rub it in. You don't have to do this every time you play, but you should make certain that these joints are well lubricated so that you don't have to squeeze when putting the instrument together. I start putting the instrument together by taking the bell and holding it from below the keys and putting it onto the middle joint. And I hold the middle joint this way, cupping the instrument like this so I'm not squeezing the keys. I slide them together, and then I line up the bridge keys. Here. Next, I take the bell and middle joint and slide it onto the top joint. I'm still holding the bell from below the key work, and I'm holding the top joint like this with the palm of my hand. I slide them together, and then I transfer my, the grip of my hand to the top of the oboe so that I don't grab the keys and cause any damage by pressing the keys. I push this together, and then Make certain that I slide the bridge keys here so that they're well adjusted and aligned. Putting the reed in the oboe. Professional oboe players make their reeds with one long blade and one shorter blade. When we put the reed into the oboe, we should take care to make certain that the shorter blade is facing our lower lip. So we look at the reed, we determine which blade is shorter, and then we put the reed into the reed well of the oboe and make certain that the shorter blade will touch our lower lip. This is important because it will help our response, our dynamic range, and the airflow into the reed. Staying motivated. Playing music with other people is one of the most exciting and fun things we can do as musicians. It's a really wonderful thing to play with other people. But there are times, like the times we live in right now, when that's not an option. So we have to get creative in order to stay motivated and to have fun. I recommend recording yourself and then playing along with the recording you've made. You can play duets this way. You can use a phone with a voice memo function, or you can use programs like GarageBand or other music software programs if you have one. It can be quite simple and fun. So I hit record in voice memo and then play one part of the duet with a count in 
so I'll know when to start playing along with the other part. Here we go. One, two. And now all I need to do is push play so I can play along and have some fun. So keep at it, keep practicing, keep making music. You can even share your recordings with friends and play duets that way. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you at a New Jersey Symphony Orchestra concert. Take care.